Texas. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Secretary, for uh, being here today and for your testimony. Uh, obviously, cooperation between Congress and the State Department is important, uh, but I'm concerned over what looks like a lack of cooperation within the executive. Uh, the policy of the White House and the State Department has not been completely aligned over the last several months. For example, mere minutes after you stated that the Saudi and Emirati blockade of Qatar hindered U.S. military action against ISIS, President Trump took to Twitter to praise the blockade. As you attempted to form an international coalition to isolate North Korea for its nuclear weapons program, President Trump called North Korean leader Kim Jong-un a smart cookie and said that he'd be, quote, honored to meet him, hurting your efforts. Your efforts to assure our European and Asian allies of our commitment to our alliances have similarly been undercut by the White House and the President. It was reported that when Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Trump stood up at their press conference and broached the idea of a one-state solution instead of a two-state solution, uh, that you were in an airplane somewhere else and that the State Department was not part of those discussions. So my question is, how can Americans and our allies around the world have confidence in your word, in the State Department's position, and most of all, that it represents what President Trump believes? Uh, Congressman, uh, just to be clear, there is no gap between the President and myself or the State Department on policy. Uh, there are differences in terms of how uh, the President chooses to articulate elements of that policy. In the instance of the Qatar uh, example that you gave, where I made a statement at the State Department, I then attended a bilat with the President of Romania, with President Trump, and then he made his statement in the Rose Gardens. Uh, I was involved in writing his comments in the Rose Garden to reflect the strong message he wanted to send, which was not just to Qatar, but he said to everyone to all countries to stop the funding, stop the killing, you know, stop teaching your young people hate. Uh, that was the way he wanted to deliver. Sure. He wanted to deliver a very strong message. But there, you, there is, Secretary, I know there is no you. daylight between he and sure. I. I hear you. Uh, Jared Kushner has been given a, uh, reportedly given a big portfolio with respect to foreign affairs. Who is responsible for the foreign affairs of our country? Is it the Department of State and yourself? Or is it Mr. Kushner in the White House? It is the Department of State and myself, and that has been reconfirmed by the President to me on multiple occasions. Uh, then, and I guess, and, and the re part of the reason I ask these questions, I was in, in February, I was in Japan and South Korea, and this was the biggest question people had. When we look to the United States, who speaks for the President reliably? Whose word can we trust? I know you can understand how important that is for our allies and also for our adversaries. Uh, so why would the State Department be left out of any discussion about one of our most important foreign policy issues, whether you're going to have a one-state solution or a two-state solution? Uh, you can see how that is, is quite strange and bizarre. Well, I think that came out of the bilateral private meeting uh, between the President and Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I think, you know, to be fair, what the President was indicating is, is that whatever approach the two sides, the Palestinians and the Israelis, want to take to achieve a peace accord, we will support. And I think what he was saying is we're prepared, he and he is prepared, to put his shoulder to the wheel to see if we can move a process along, and he is going to be unconstrained Sure. in exploring any and all other alternatives, because the alternatives everyone has pursued now for so many years have not produced a result. And I think these are some of the changes that people have a difficult time perhaps understanding tactically. Yeah, and, and thank the you for that. The President is saying, let's sure. explore everything. Let I'm me just make, uh, let me make one last comment. Uh, first, I don't mean it as a knock on your leadership or your record at the department. Uh, I think that I believe that you've been put in a very difficult position and it's not just yourself, it's other members of the cabinet where they essentially will make a statement believing what they, be, they believe to be the president's position only to have the president go on Twitter or otherwise make a contradictory statement. But in all of it, it's very unsettling for Americans to try to understand where our government is headed, where the president is headed, but even more unsettling for allies who are not in the United States and have no other indicators by what they, but but then what they hear on the news. Um, so we would just ask, I would just ask for 
I guess, more thoughtfulness from the executive branch on how they approach these things. So we, so we go now to Mr. Ted Yoho, 